let's talk about few more definitions um, before we proceed because they'll be useful in future so let's say if we have a group capital G which has some elements and there's a there's a there's some some of these uh, some of the elements of this capital G let's say belong to a small group G which means that elements belonging to the small group G satisfy the four conditions of being a group so G is the main group but small G is called the subgroup so elements belonging to small G satisfy the four conditions of being a group okay what are the cosets so if let's say uh, there's the for some big group G there's a, there exists a small group a small subgroup G or small G uh, let me rephrase for a big uh, for a for for a group capital G let's say there exists a subgroup small G and then for X which belongs to capital G but which does not belong to G a right coset is defined as G X and a left coset is defined as X G okay uh, moreover these cosets are not groups because they do not have unit elements so G X and X G which are the cosets are not subgroups because they are missing the unit element moreover uh, there are no elements common in a coset and a subgroup and the subgroup which means G and let's say G X or X G will not have any common elements and how we can prove that so how do we prove it let's say there is a certain element some element which is common in both uh, in in G and G X and let's say that element is S L which means S K times X is SL where SK and SL they both belong to small g and this is the coset so SKX is the coset which has one element SL that belongs to small g and we can rearrange this as X equals SK inverse SL now we know SK belongs to G and uh, because G is a group SK will have an inverse so we have an inverse but here what we see is that the product of two elements which belong to G should give rise to an element which it, which also belongs to G which means X belongs to G small g but we start with the condition that X should not belong with G which means there should not be any common elements between G and GX okay let's take one more uh, theorem which says if there are two cosets um, let's say GX and GY then they are the same or they do not have any element common okay let's prove that so either they have all the elements same or they do not have any element common so let's for the sake uh, we, we, we assume that there is one element which is common between GX and, uh, and oh I'm sorry this should be GY so let's assume that there is some element which is common in GX and GY I mean not all the elements are common 
as well as there are no none element which are common so we are taking the the middle path that there is just one element that is common in gx and gy then we can write that for some element in uh, g skx should be equal to sly where we know sk and sl belongs to small g okay if this is true we can rewrite the whole thing as xy inverse equals sk inverse and sl now we know that <coughs> uh, sk and sl belongs to g so sk inverse also belongs to g so this whole thing also belongs to g and if this whole thing also belongs to g that means xy inverse belongs to g2 and if xy inverse belongs to g then g x y inverse should be same as g because of rearrangement theorem because we know that if we take one element from the group small uh, from the group g and multiply all the elements of the group by that element it reproduces the original group just uh, the reproduced group is sort of rearranged in a different uh, manner but it has the same elements and this can be written as gx equals gy so we started with this condition and we ended here which means both the groups i mean both the cosets have the same elements here this is one coset this is the other coset so just assuming that only one element is common leads us to the case when which says that all the elements are common so either there are no elements which are common between the these two cosets or all of them are common between those these two cosets Okay, and we'll talk a few more definitions in the following lectures.